Okay, so here we're going to do one more example related to derivatives of exponential functions. And in this case, we want to figure out for what values of x does this function, 5e to the 5x minus 25x, when does that have negative derivatives? So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve, well, we want to figure out when the derivative is less than 0. And that would tell us when uh, the derivative when we have negative derivatives, okay? So when is the deriv for what values of x is the derivative negative? Well, to take the derivative of our function, okay, so we've got 5 times e to the 5x. Well, the 5 just comes along. The derivative of e to the 5x, that just repeats itself. And then we have to take the derivative of the exponent. Well, the derivative of 5x is just 5. And then uh, when we take the derivative of our negative 25x, we'll just get negative 25. So hey, 5 times 5 is 25. Um, so we have 25 times e to the 5x minus 25. And what we can do now is I would just factor the 25 out of there. OK, so now we have to solve our inequality. Um, and I wrote f prime just because I'm so used to writing f prime. Um, so we have to solve h prime less than 0. Well, so we want 25 times e to the 5x minus 1. We want that to be less than 0. Well, to solve inequalities, um, typically what I do is I figure out what makes uh, the expression equal to 0. Well, 25 never equals 0. Um, so we'll take e to the 5x minus 1, set that equal to 0. So we would have e to the 5x equals 1. And a couple different ways you could think about this. Um, so e to what exponent is 1? Well, e raised to the 0 power equals 1. So that would tell us that 5x has to equal 0. And if we divide both sides by 5, that would tell us that x equals 0. So I put that number on a number line, so there's x equals 0. And then I test that point along with a point from uh, um, each interval. Well, again, if you plug in 0, we get e to the 0, which is 1. 1 minus 1, we would get 0 inside. 25 times 0 is not less than 0. So I'm going to put an open circle to indicate that that doesn't work. Um, if we let, for example, we could take any number to the left. Maybe we use x equals negative 1. And I'm asking myself, if we plug that in, well, OK, so we'd have 25 times e to the 5 times negative 1 minus 1. Is that less than 0 is what I want to know. Well, this is 25 um, e to the negative 5. That's 1 over e to the 5th minus 1. Again, is that less than 0? So the question, since 25 is positive, the idea really is, is 1 over e to the 5th uh, minus 1. Is this negative? Um, and definitely it's going to be e to the 5th is a, uh, you know, you can think about e as being kind of close to 3. Um, so if you took 1 over 3 to the 5th, you know, 3 to the 5th is a pretty big number. 1 over that minus 1. This is certainly going to be negative. Well, in that case, we would have a positive times a negative and that is in fact going to be less than 0. So anything to the left of 0 would work. And now we could do the same thing. We could test something bigger, maybe positive 1. So if we test positive 1, now I'm kind of asking myself, is 25 times e to the, well, if we plug in x equals 1, we'll just get 5. I'm thinking, is that less than 0? Well, e to the fifth is a pretty big number. When we subtract 1, this is still positive. We have a positive times a positive, And that's not going to be less than 0 at all. So it looks like uh, the original solution uh, for what values of x does our function have negative derivatives. Um, we could say uh, when x is uh, less than 0. Or we could say, you know, if x is if x is in the interval, so we could say negative infinity up to zero, but not including it. So um, just two different ways of saying the same thing. So we could just say x is less than zero, or if x is in this interval um, from negative infinity up to zero.